On the day of the event, the crowd gathered. They were excited for the game. We started playing. I started pitching the first few pitches, and the defendant here swung at one of those pitches and smacked the ball. The pitchfork vibrated in a way that I had not heard before. It, it made a metal on wood sound that it just didn't sound good. We continued on after I warned him to take it easy again the second time with him swinging with all his might like he was going for a home run hit or something. So then that's when the pitchfork actually broke on impact. And then what happens to you? And then I see the end of the pitchfork flying towards my face and it made impact. I felt the bone crush on impact. I felt the piece of metal slide into my eye socket. I thought my husband was dead on the ground this in front of me. This is a freak accident. I did not hurt nobody on purpose. This, this wasn't a freak accident. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. This but was not. So you, you were frightened too. replaced it. When you saw the pitchfork hit Mr. Madison in the face, you were frightened. I thought I killed him. My mother raised five kids. I was the only boy. And I really didn't have any friends. When I met Mr. Harris, when I was in school, we just connected. You know, I was... The so you guys are lifelong friends. Yes, sir. Um, I was a class clown in school, and he was too. So we just made, you know, just connection. It was over after that. Two clowns getting down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I've always had his back. It's something we learned. We grew up learning. You know, you got your back on and off the field. So you always had his back. So after his divorce, I, I had his back, as I always do. I always come through for him. You were there to help him through these tough times? From grade school till now. And here we are. So, Not you now. know, I wanted to help my brother out. He coming back home. He needed a house to be in. I talked to my wife. We agreed to let him in. And sure yeah. enough, it comes back to backfire in my face. No good deed goes unpunished. No good deed right. goes unpunished. So you, you do see that, though. Your, your man is trying to help you out. I heard a noise from the top of the garage, I look up and I notice that the garage door was starting to come down a little bit. So my instincts kicked in. You know, get out of here, survival mode. So I sprint. I was, what position did you play in I football? I played running back. Your running back instincts kicked in, then what did the running back do? I took off and I was hitting for the touchdown. But what happened was I got stopped by a linebacker, that was the garage door, oh. it slammed down on top of my back. I mean, I've been hit by linebackers, 250 pounds, but it was nothing like this pain that I experienced, Judge. You know, it basically pinned me to the ground and the door. So this door crashed on top of your neck. And when I found out, I was extremely concerned. This is my best friend that I'm hearing about seeing pictures in the hospital and phone calls from the hospital. And he's hurt on your property. We do own the property. So However, like he mentioned before, he signed mm. over a lease. He ran under the door, Your Honor. But I just want to know what adult man would run under a garage door. A well, former running back who still <laughs> thinks he got it. Who oh, still got it. thinks he got it. it. Y'all see he's in some agony, right? Yes, Your Honor. And you wouldn't want that to happen to your buddy or simply just a tenant. Anyone. You're right, Your Honor. But you believe it's his fault? Absolutely, Your yes, Honor. Sir. Well, so, my son has been friends with the Soriano's son, Brad, for years. They've been friends since freshman year. And that's, that's Brad here in the courtroom? That's Brad. Okay. He's either always at my house or my son is at their house. The boys are close friends. He heard about the daughter's party and he went there with a group of his friends. So he goes to the party and that's where this, this uh, attempt at this stunt happened? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Soriano, you were having this graduation party for your daughter. Yes, Your Honor. So you go into the pool, then what happened? After that, I bring out the trampoline. Where was the trampoline? In the corner, off in the distance. Okay, so you pulled it near the pool. Yes, Your Honor. And then what did you do? I uh, watched the video. So you watched the video that day before you did this? Yes, Your Honor. And then I tried to do it exact, the exact same way. I got on the trampoline, jumped a couple of times, propelled to go into the water, but I hit the concrete and... And what part of you hit the concrete? My upper neck and my back. What, what happened out there? To start off, we did all go and play video games, all of us hanging out because we're all friends. Okay. I got eliminated because even the best fall sometimes. I passed the <laughs> controller to a friend because it was their turn. And I go to reach for my water that was on the windowsill. Okay. That's immediately when I see Wayne thrusting his arms forward to project himself forward. Oh, so you didn't know he was outside? No, sir. It was as if he had snuck out to go follow his own passions. I kind of, here recently, I really wanted to share my passion more with people. Um, so I so you live to, outdoors. Yes, yeah, sir. So I decided to start me like a little group and uh, find some people who kind of enjoying the same thing. You know, that's my mass group. Uh, really enjoy it. 
So, Mr. Richardson, what kind of adventures were you looking for? You mentioned hiking. Hiking, climbing, all sorts of adventures, camping, anything that we could do to get us outside and to get us the thrill of an adventure, really. So, Mr. Black, this was your adventure. You put this together, right? Uh, that is correct, sir, yes. Well, what were you all supposed to be doing out there? I mean, really just having fun, uh, observing nature, enjoying a hike. Uh, I don't know about all this danger talk, um, but yeah, we were out there just having fun, enjoying a hike. Well, hiking around the mountains and, and uh, doing things out in nature, there are dangers, right? There are dangers, yes, sir, but um, controlled dangers is and, the way I would put it. And so the controlled dangers. I was just taking in the breathtaking views, and as Dean said, he always takes pictures, and he had his newfangled drone this time. And so he's flying it around, and I'm standing, arms wide open. I do the regular pose, but I clearly cannot. And so I was standing, arms wide open, just taking in the world and trying to get a cool picture. Why wouldn't I? We're on top of a mountain. Well, this is a special moment. It is a special moment. That's what I'm trying to say. And then... You could have enjoyed it from the ground with the rest of us. Oh, uh, why? Do you, get the same view? You no Do you need. get the same view down there on the ground with the rest of the no, people? No, the feeling you get on top of the boulder is way more than you can experience if you're just on the ground. You want to get as high as so you can. So you're standing on, on top of the boulder like, like this, yes, right? Yes, Your Honor. You're taking yeah. in all that nature has to give you and them what happened. Exactly. Then Dean starts flying his drone closer to us. It? I assume to get a better angle of the of the picture. Like I, he's taken pictures before. He knows what he's doing. So I'm you standing see the there. drone flying around. I see the drone flying okay. around. Yes. And so I'm standing there, arms wide open, waiting for the picture. And then the drone keeps getting closer and closer. And I'm just thinking, all right, Dean, it's getting a little close. And then it just beelines right towards me, hits me right in the gut. You're standing on top of the boulder and this drone slams into you. Yes, Your Honor. Then what happens? When the drone hit me, I don't know if you're familiar with drones, Your Honor. I'm but not. It's basically a box with a camera with spinning knives on it. it and it flew, flew straight dramatic towards dramatic me, hit me right in the gut. Just, it, is not it was a horrible a pain. And the force of the drone blade. pushed me backwards off the, mount, off the boulder on top of the mountain. Now, this drone is recording, right? Yes, sir. You've submitted a video. I want to see that video. Yeah, Let's I was take not a look holding at. the controller when this happened, though. Would Let's take have... a look at the drone. Didn't you see this thing coming at you? I saw it coming towards me, but he was flying it before. Your I Honor, he was, he was trying to hug control. it. It looked like he was trying to Why? give it a hug. Oh, well, wait a minute. I was trying to give it a cool picture. You saw it coming at him. You've got the control. Exactly. I, Why didn't he steer around me? I was not holding me? the controller. Okay, where are the controls? So the controller was sitting flying? down. I was just looking around. I had it home Why mode. Why was to have the controller con not in your hands? You're flying. It was on home mode. It's on autopilot. Mr. Richardson, uh -huh. Mr. Black, this is your tour, your adventure, your drone. Why not your fault? I've repeatedly, repeatedly stated he should have moved and that I didn't have control of the drone. So he should have protected you from a no, bad decision to no, put the controls down? No, he should have protected down? himself. He should have protected himself. Why weren't you driving the drone? I had the, the controller was sitting on the ground, Matthew. It's equally as dangerous. I don't understand. This is insane.